Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. <sighs> okay, so I'm, I'm pretty excited uh, for today. Um, we have Dean Graziosi on. Ha! I'm, yes, we got Dean on the She's Making an Impact podcast, and he is just like fire. If you don't know who Dean is, I was, I was literally just telling him at the end as we wrapped up the episode and we were just chatting afterwards. I'm like, you have impacted my life so much from afar. Like you don't even know. And he's incredible. So I'll, I'll give you his bio. Just know you were in for like an epic treat in this episode. And it was just an honor to be able to chat with him and have him on the show. So Dean Graziosi is a multiple New York Times bestselling author, entrepreneur, and investor. He has started or played a major role in over 14 successful companies that have changed lives all over the world, including the new mastermind.com platform. His mission for over 20 years has been to deliver self-education to those seeking transformation, fulfillment, and success outside the traditional education path. His most impactful project to date has included being the largest online product launch in history with a program he co-created with Tony Robbins called Knowledge Broker Blueprint. This world-class course continues to impact over 38 thousand people in 150 countries and 4,100 niches to share what they know and help make self-education the new norm. Dean is now planning to exponentially widen his impact by serving over 1 million new people and exposing them to the self-education industry through his Own Your Future Challenge with Tony Robbins in May 2021, which by the way, we talk about that. You're going to have to register. It's going to blow your mind. Um, so we'll talk about that at the end. And Dean lives in Paradise Valley, Arizona with his wife, Lisa, and three children. All right, take notes. This is something you're probably going to listen to a few times over. So enjoy. Welcome to the She's Making an Impact podcast. It is an honor to have you here. Oh, good to be here, Rachel. Well, can we start off? Just tell us a little bit about you. I'm sure my audience already knows who you are, but can you give us like just a little brief background on who you are and how you got started and what you're doing? Yeah, you know, I, I'll share enough. Hey, everybody who's listening right now. And, and I know there's a million places you could be and lots of podcasts you could be listening to, but you're with us and I don't take that lightly. So Rachel and I are going to rock the house today. So be prepared, get your pen out, get some, get a journal out or get your notes and your phone out, whatever you got to do. Yeah. But um, I, you know what? I, not that I want to skip over my uh, history. I just want to, I'll share this. I, I know what it's like to want more, to desire more to know that you have more to give the world, to be the woman God meant you to be, or the man meant God meant you to be, or the universe, whatever you believe in, while simultaneously feeling like, but there's just not enough time, or I feel a little bit like an imposter, or what is my true purpose? Like, am I supposed to do that? Or am I supposed to be a mom? Am I supposed to be a wife or a husband or a dad? I know all of those feelings. I also know what it's like to say, screw it. I'm just staying where I'm at. I should be blessed. I have, I have healthy children or I have healthy family. I should be good. But I also know what it feels like to say, no, that's BS. That's not true. I am meant for more. There's another level of me. Dale Carnegie said it best. He said, the biggest plight of the human race is knowing you have more to give the world. You have more potential, but you're not utilizing it. Even when I say that, I get goosebumps, right? Yeah, and that's what we him. feel, right? We know that we have more to give, but all these things right in front of us sometimes seem like they're anchors, but it doesn't have to be because we all have 24 hours in a day. We all want to spend time with our family. We all feel like imposters. We all start fresh. We all have family that think we're absolutely insane for not being happy with where we're at. But what makes the difference between the few that take uncomfortable, courageous action to power through that and come out on the other side while most people play small their whole entire lives? And that's what I'd love to talk about today. We don't have to play small. We don't have to give up being a mom or a dad that we want to be because we also want to be an entrepreneur. There's an absolute balance. And here's what I want to tell you. It's absolutely worth it. I know what it's like to be on both sides. I know what it's like to be not really envious, but admire other people doing it and feel like that's not me. But I also know what it's like to be on the other side. I also know what it's like to move forward when everybody thinks you're crazy, when you feel like you're not good enough. And I know that that's cumulative. And each time you step another step that you move forward, that you move forward with purpose, with clarity, with confidence, all of a sudden the world opens up because you've navigated new territory and you realize it's exactly where you're supposed to be. And I want to tell you, once you're on the other side of the fear, once you break through, once the sales start coming in, the impact starts happening, the checks are hitting the mail or the happiness is hitting your, your face. It's, it's so contagious and it's so, um, it's so uplifting that you fight for more of it. So I just want to say, I didn't tell you anything about my past other than 
believe me, I've been broker than broke. I lived in a trailer park as a kid. I didn't go past high school. I had dyslexia. I wasn't supposed to make it. I'm not supposed to be the guy that's a multiple New York Times bestselling author and, and started 13 companies and am married to the woman of my dreams. I have three amazing children. I love my wife more than anything. I fall more in love with her every single day of my life. I love being a dad and coaching Little League, coaching softball. And I, I built a life where I own my future. I don't let anybody else own it. Amazing. What are some of the biggest setbacks or failures that you've had as an entrepreneur and how have you gotten? You have like 10 hours. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Um, You know, I, I think here's what I believe. I think we all have this. I know I did this illusion that when we get to a certain level of success, the failures, the insecurity, the people letting you down, that they fade away and they don't, they just get compounded, but that's okay. So here's what I want to tell you. If you want a bigger life, a more impactful life, you want to set a better example for your family. If you want more, whatever more is, you fill in more. That means you have to solve bigger problems. Hmm. You have to be ready to fail at a bigger level. Let me just ask you, as you're listening right now, think about this. The next five years, if you continue to do what you're doing right now, and, and I know some of you are already in business, you're already doing well, you want to go to another level, great. But if we continue to do what we're currently doing, we will continue to get what we're going to get, right? That's just, that's just the way it goes. So I'd love for you to think about if it was five years from now, right? And in those five years, if you left your life the way it is, are you going to have disappointment? Are, if you leave it just the way it is, are you going to fail? Are people going to let you down? Are you going to question yourself? Are you going to wonder if you're the best parent, the best husband, the best wife, the best friend? Are all those things going to happen no matter what? And the fact of the matter is yes. So if they're going to happen anyway, and stuff's going to go sideways anyway, you might as well be fighting for your best level, your best version of you. You might as well be fighting for doing your own thing, for creating the income you want, the freedom you want, to own your future, take control, because you're going to deal with crap anyway. So I look at it and people say, God, how do you juggle so much? What about the the mom who's working three jobs, taking care of her son or daughter and get them to school and making them lunch and doing the jobs and paying the bills and staying up late doing the laundry? You're still juggling. You're not, I'm not working harder than you. We're all, we're all working hard, but it's not, we're all equal as souls but we're not equal in the value we bring to the world. And we get paid based on the value we bring to the world. And that's why I love some of the things I've been blessed to go down because you can impact people, bring massive value and make a difference for yourself. So I hope that helps. That was a long answer to a a short question. Totally. So one of the things that you said is be ready to fail at a bigger level. Have you ever had like that fear of failure? And if so, how did you get over it? Uh, Okay. So here's what I want to tell you, Rachel. I'm still afraid to fail. Oh yeah. Of course it never goes away. And I think it's kind of the edge that pushes you ahead. Like I still play everything I do. Like I'm 10 points down. I, I do. And, and, and some people might say, isn't it time to relax? It's like, no, I could relax. I listen, I feel completely blessed to say I could check out right now and just be super dad, super husband and not work. And then what would I be doing? I, I, I don't think if, if we're not growing, we're dying. If we're not climbing, we're sliding. I, I want my kids to see the best version of me, always innovating, going to the next level and, and impacting more lives, right? So if you do that, if you're going to put yourself out there to go to your next level, I promise you, you're going to be scared to death. I promise you, you're going to have a fear of failure. I promise you, you're going to have a fear of people around you going, see, I knew Rachel couldn't make it. What a dreamer. Oh, she thought she could do a podcast. That's crazy, right? Yep. So if you're going to put yourself out there to move, know you're going to be fearful and know some of them are going to fail and know it's worth every bit of it. Because at the end of the day, if you do what everybody else wants, if you give into your inner self doubt, that's afraid, then that self doubt is going to run your life. And, and what will that look like? Have I been afraid? I've been afraid at every level. I used to work. Listen, Rachel, now people might see me online or partnering with Tony Robbins or doing big challenges. Tony and I just did 837,000 people in a challenge, uh, multiple New York Times bestselling author. You might see all that. But maybe what you don't see, Rachel, is that I used to work on cars cars and change engines and brakes and paint cars. And then I got a tow truck and I was doing tow trucks at night and cars during the day. And then I got in my first apartment house with no money down after knocking on a hundred doors. I finally got one deal. So I'd work on cars during the day. And at night I'd work on houses and I started gaining momentum. And then I bought something from Tony Robbins. It shifted my life. I wanted to be in this industry, the knowledge industry, the 
the, the information industry, the upskill industry, the self-education industry, whatever you call it, I wanted to be in it. Tony took money from me, gave me knowledge and my life changed. I wanted to give knowledge to people to help them. And when I did that, I mean, I could give you a million times, but it wasn't just scared. I was petrified. I had built, I was, I was on my way or already a millionaire from a kid who lived in a trailer park. And now all of a sudden I was taking, this was before the internet, Rachel, before podcasts, before MySpace, like nothing before AOL, nothing like this existed. And I decided I, I wanted to impact lives. There was no going online. I had to build an, inf shoot an infomercial. I was in for a quarter of a million dollars in my twenties. I borrowed money, credit card money. And one day I woke up, my sister came to me and said, are you crazy? I'm so proud of where you got, but this is over for you. I got in my own head. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? I'm not Tony Robbins. I'm not anybody else. I'm not Mel Robbins. I'm not any of these people. Oh my God, you fool. You're going to lose it all. I remember that moment. And, and I was a millimeter. And then as I'm doubting myself, I said about my sister, my sister, who I love dearly, my older sister, she drove eight hours from Virginia to sit down with me like a, like an intervention and was like, Dean, proud of you, but you've pushed it too far. You're going to lose everything now. Quarter of a million. Are you crazy? And I, I tell you, I remember taking a walk that day going, you're a fool. You're an idiot. And man, if you give that inner self-doubt just a crumb of fuel, right? I don't know if you've ever been there, Rachel. And all of a sudden start saying, we're going to lose it all. You're going to be in debt. Your friends are going to make, think you're an idiot. Your family's going to say, I told you you were a dreamer, all of it. And again, Tony always says this, like I was a millimeter away from going, they're right. I'm just going to stay right here. And I would have played small, but I started thinking if I continue to do what I'm doing, I'm going to get what I have. If I do what the people who are giving me advice, though, I love them dearly. I retired both of my parents by the time I was 30. I still send both of them a check every week. I buy them a new car every two years. I bought my dad a house. I bought my mom a house. If my parents didn't have me, the crazy dreamer, the one that took chances, what the hell would they be doing right now? Living off of $500, $800 a month in social security, right? So the reason I told you that story and, and I, I went deep on it, because we all face that moment of this is scary. I don't know if I can do it. And we have that choice. Stay where we are and get what we continue to have or take uncomfortable action. And the last thing I'll say is just don't take uncomfortable action on your own. There's people who've already been there that have already forged the path that have already figured out what works and figure out what doesn't. And in today's self-education world, we can learn from them. We can extract that knowledge. We could start on third base. We don't always have to say how to do it. We could say who's already done it and how can I learn from them? Let me add to that. So I actually went through your program that you did with Tony Robbins, the Knowledge Business Blueprint. There's one little section in there. I even forget what it was called, but that going through that one little section helped me add an extra hundred thousand dollars to a launch wow. that I was already doing. Just that like one little part. It was like one idea that I just took and implemented. And I was like, oh, it's amazing. So what you said was like, you, there's people that have done it before you. So figure yeah, don't out, try like, to figure it out on your own. Absolutely. So you said the moment of you doing the infomercial. I also, I listened to your book, um, the underdog and oh, I'm having great, my great. son, I'm going to have my son. He's seven. I told him about, it. he's like, I want to listen to it too. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. So there was a moment when you were putting out your first apologize. Class. I think I swear like five times in the book. So it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's worth it for him to hear that. It's fine. Okay. So there was the moment where you were, um, going to be putting out your first book. And the publisher was like, this is crap. Like what? And then you oh. almost deleted the whole thing. What went through your head at that moment to say like, she's wrong. This is going to be a winner. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Um, you, as you said it, I still get that feeling of what I felt like at that moment. Yeah. So picture this, we all have limiting beliefs. If you don't, congratulations. <laughs> I do. I had dyslexia in school. And I remember Miss Thompson in seventh grade, always telling me you're dumb. Just sound it out. Or, you're ridiculous. I remember her saying you're ridiculous. It's right there. Just sound it out. I'm like, I can't. Right. Um, so I always felt kind of dumb. I didn't read books, but I didn't realize later on in life, I could start listening to books. And she, I was just, she was just judging me by an outdated scorecard. I can listen to a book in eight days and retain that knowledge forever, but I can't read it. It just doesn't stick for me. It's, it's that form of dyslexia. Anyway, that was a belief of mine really embedded in there that you're kind of dumb. You can't, you can't barely read a book. How could you write a book? But I overcame that. I work on my personal growth. I, I started getting massive momentum. I started gaining success in my life. I start to, I decide to write a book and I decide to write a book called totally fulfilled well over a decade ago, maybe 15 years ago. And I was a nervous wreck writing it. 
And I really wrote it the way I talk. If, If you read the book, if you read Underdog Advantage, you understand I write the way I talk. And it's very formal. It's like, I, I want people to feel like they're having a conversation, not reading the perfect book. Anyway, long story short, I get done writing it. I hire an editor who I becomes highly acclaimed and she's amazing and has edited New York Times bestselling books. I hire her. She, she's all excited when she meets me. She calls me that night. I flew all the way to the, from the West Coast to the East Coast to meet her. Um, and she says, uh, she calls me that night in my hotel room. She goes, Dean, uh, before I take your money, I got to tell you, this isn't a book. She said, it's a 250 page conversation. She said, there's some rules you can break when you write a book. You broke all of them. It doesn't need an edit. It needs a rewrite. I remember hanging up the phone and all those limiting beliefs, like a wave came rushing in. Like you're dumb. You had dyslexia. You didn't read enough books. Who the hell do you think you are? That's for book writers. That's for authors. That's for people who are smarter than you. And I remember just saying, this is the, I can't start over. It's too much work. This thing was a mountain to get here. And I literally was sitting, I was an old IBM laptop. You just brought, I forgot about this. It was like thick, black, heavy, probably it was like an anchor carrying it on a plane was like carrying an anchor. I opened it up and I looked at it. I'm like, you're so dumb. And I remember I had my finger like this. I'm like, just delete it. Just freaking delete it. I had my finger over the keypad um, and I didn't. And I just, I don't know if it was a week or a month. I just started thinking, you know what? Maybe I I don't know how to write, but I know the conversations can help and empower people. And um, inch away, no, a millimeter away from deleting it. And uh, then finally I hired another uh, editor and I just said, I know I broke every rule. I know it's not that great the way it's written. Um, could you just clean it up? Make it look like, so I'm not so dumb. He cleaned it up. We published it. I got a publishing deal and it became a New York Times bestselling book the first week. Now it didn't sell a million copies. It wasn't a major hit, but it's a New York Times bestseller. Tens of thousands of copies went out. And now I'm on my sixth book. My last book is about at a million copies. So um, yeah, it's those little things, right? We're sometimes we're not to be a, not to share a stupid sports analogy, but sometimes we're like on the five yard line yeah. and we give up and don't realize we already came all the way down the field and we're like right in near the end zone. And we go, no. Nah, and that limiting belief stops us. So I'm going to encourage you today to, to prove that limiting belief, that story, that, that thought process, that it's a lie. It really mm-hmm. is. There's, you are meant for more. You have more, you could be more, you could share more learn from people who have already been there and figure out how to take the uncomfortable action needed to move forward. I love that. So the world has changed massively yeah, over the past year. Um, what are some lessons that you've learned? And then what are some trends that you see happening in the online marketing space? Yeah. So, so two things, trends is we are socially distanced. So we have to be virtually connected. We are as human beings, we need to be in communication. We need to be in contact with each other. So, create places where you can virtually connect with people. Your Facebook groups, if you have one, light it up, fire it up, be in there all the time. People are dying to be connected to something. People need hope. People have uncertainty at a high level. And and how do they have less uncertainty is by being connected to other people where we lock arms and do better. Um, Secondly, and this is what you mentioned with KBB, it's what Tony and I have obsessed on is teaching people how to enter the knowledge industry. You have something right this very second, whether you believe it or not, you have something, a story, an experience, a hobby, a skill, an expertise, or a mess that you got through and you're on the other side, the mess that becomes your message. You have something that people want, need, and are paying for right this very second. That's the knowledge industry. The industry Forbes says will be a billion dollars a day by 2025. And this shifting industry, sorry, somebody rang my doorbell. And this shifting world has amplified that because everybody's home and people are deciding not to go back to college because that's not working, not to try to figure it out on my own. Like what you said, you got from just one part of the course. People are saying, hey, I want to find out who's already been there, who's already experienced this and who's willing to share it. And I'd rather cut the check to go faster. And that's why this industry is exponentially growing. Now there's other industries growing too. I just, this is just happens to be my passion. But what I'd say is be the investigative reporter. Don't stand around with your arms crossed waiting for the world to go back to the way it was. I don't think, Rachel, it's ever going back to the way it was. So we must be the ones to stand up like the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Don't sit around and wait for someone to bring the cheese to you. Someone took it, it's gone. Go investigate and find new cheese, right? And and that's why we're doing things like the, the Own Your Future Challenge and things like that to show people kind of behind the curtain of what's possible in today's world. 
Can you, while we're on that, can you talk to us about the own your future challenge? Cause I'm so excited for that. Yeah. You know, listen, because the world changed, it's allowed different opportunities, right? Uh, my partner and friend, Tony Robbins and so many other speakers were having at this Tony's on the road, 250 days a year. So to get him locked down to do something is almost impossible. We did a challenge with Tony in January because it's a new world. People have to have a new perspective, a new mindset. Uh, we put 837,000 people from 190 countries around the world in this challenge, free challenge for five days. It was unbelievable. So we decided to do it again. So we're doing May 11th and put this in your calendar, May 11th, we're doing the own your future challenge. And why we called it the own your future challenge is because if you don't own your future in today's shifting world, someone else is gonna just yep. say it like it is. And when, when I hear that, it's like, oh, I want to own my time. I want to own my control of the things I do and what I work on. And like, I need to own my future and I'll fight for it. But a lot of people are uncertain right now and they don't know where. So where to go, where to turn, where to pivot, where to shift, where to investigate. So we decided over five days to show people how to own their future with their economics in today's shifting world. Cause some things are dying. Some things are exponentially growing. And not only Tony and I, we brought, we got some amazing people. In fact, if you go to own it 70, own it 70.com, you got to go and not only reserve your spot and it's free, not kind of free, totally free uh, for five days. It's Tony, myself, but wait till you see the lineup from Jenna Kutcher and the boss Bay brand, Natalie and Danielle and glow and Shailene Johnson and uh, oh my God, Brennan Burchard, uh, Trent Shelton. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And the amazing people, uh, Jamie Kern Lima, like people that would never have the time to do this, but now they do. And they're all locking together for this amazing event. So go to ownit70.com. Like I said, and I'm going to say it a million times because it's free and I doubt it will ever happen again. Again, this shifting world has allowed all these amazing people to say yes, to serve, deliver, share capability, show you how they did it um, in a way that they really can't if we're all back into the normal world. And here's the thing I wanna share, two quick things about it, because it's this important. If you're ready to overcome fear, if you're ready to see a new potential, to be able to do something from home, to do something where you can be more in control and own your future, then not only go to the link and reserve your spot, pretend you paid $10,000 for it. Mm -hmm. I mean it because sometimes when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. It's like, exactly. oh, it's that free challenge. Maybe I'll go. When do you get myself, Tony Robbins and all those amazing guests yep. hell bent on helping you for free over five days, about two hours a day. So the first thing is go register, pretend you spent 10 grand because you'll show up if you did. Get your journal out, get your pen out and yep. play full out. Get in the challenge. There's going to be a little mini challenge every day. Do the challenges, right? And secondly, get an accountability partner. Think of right now who could do the challenge with you and send them the link. Send them ownit70.com right now and say, hey, do this challenge. I mean, look at all the amazing people with each other and take action with what we learned. Amazing. I'm so excited. I will be there. I have it on my calendar. I'll be there the whole time. So I'm making the time for it. Everyone else should as well. So you mentioned Tony Robbins and getting his cassette tape back in the day. What are some of like the books or mentors that you've had that have really impacted you and helped you grow over the oh, years? Really, really good question. I love questions that I don't get asked a lot. Um, so I've had a, I've had a bunch uh, through the years for different reasons. So one of my, uh, I, I love the, 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 older personal development stuff like Dale Carnegie, um, Napoleon Hill. I mean, they're the foundational of personal development. I also love Wayne Dyer when I want to get in more into my heart and be more in alignment in my spirituality uh, on another level. Um, Deepak Chopra is great when I want to try to meditate. Um, uh, Eckhart Tolle, the power of now, like looking back that way. Of course, Tony has made a, a huge impact uh, in my life. Um, I love... I love the, the, I think I lean towards what I need at the moment. So if I feel like I need a higher a connection with a higher purpose, I'll lean down that road. If I, if I feel like I want to make sure my team is connected, I might read, I love a uh, shoe dog, the creator of Nike, amazing book on culture. Um, uh, uh, the, the lady who created Netflix or was a part of Netflix. I can't think of the book right now. Um, great book. Um, so I, I, it's been a million because I, I listen to a book about every 10 days. Uh, Alan Christensen, um, uh, Clayton Christensen, look up Clayton Christensen. Uh, he's got a book, um, How Will You Measure Your Life? Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite books of all time. It's a really great balance of, of business and family. And he, he interweaves it 
to where you're like talking about your business and then you didn't realize it shifted. Now you're talking about your family and it's, it's amazing book. So as you can tell, I could go down a road forever and I'm so grateful for these leaders, these, these people who have had challenges and overcame them and then they're willing to share it. And something I want to share with everybody listening, you have a story to share. You do more than you realize. And there's somebody right now that's going to go through a situation or try the new business or go through a divorce or try to figure out how to make things work or juggling being a mom. Like there's a million things people are going to go through right now. They're starting. And you could be the person that helps them go faster, like Eckhart Tolle and Wayne Dyer and, and all the rest have done for me. And in today's world, you don't have to be the 50 year, 30 year, five year expert. If you're one chapter ahead, um, you can help people go faster. And that's why we're so excited about the own your future challenge. I love it. Last question. What does it mean to you to make an impact? Oh, what's it mean? Um, I could look at it through two lenses. One is what's the impact I can make on my family. Um, you know, we all have our family history and I feel like I'm responsible for the legacy after me. I can't do anything of the kind of, um, craziness that happened before me, the dysfunction that happened before me. My parents were married nine times between them. So crazy. My mom, five, my dad, four, but I'm responsible for the impact I can make on the legacy after me and not blame the ones before me. Now it's my turn. I have the baton in my hand. So how am I going to hand the baton off? So that's impact in my personal life. And then impact of other people is, is helping them go faster. If, if people are suffering, or need a way to get to the end result faster. And I have it in my head. If I can impact means I help them get there quicker. I love that. So we're all signing up for the challenge. Where else can we connect with you? Um, I'm on Instagram every day. I like that platform because it's easy. I do a quick little story every single day. And my podcast is at deanspodcast.com, which is a fun little podcast. Use about 10 to 15 minute clips three times a week. So, uh, uh, it's, it's, and it's growing like crazy. So I could see in both those places. Perfect. I love it. Dean, you're amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to just pour into our audience. And I'm so excited for the challenge. All right. We'll see you there. Thanks everybody.